look smarter. And you shouldn't even care about those noses in the air and the crooked stairs. Cause there's a party over here, so you might as well be here with the people care. Don't hold back, the world.
in Yankland? Oh, jeez. In my part of Yankland, it is 11 a.m. Sorry, I dropped. Drop the mic. Um, let's let's get all clipped in. And now we're all clipped. Wait, no, we're not. There we are. Now we're clipped. Hi. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you from? Where are you from, 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 from my friend? Six. Okay, okay, okay. How's Scotland treating you? To be honest with you, I've not um I've not had a lot of cool people uh to talk to from Scotland, so I don't know as much about it as I wish I did. It's cold and wet. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of located in that part of the world, isn't it? Well, I hope it's not too bad for you. We're cold and wet today over here, and um, a bunch of us found your channel the other night. Oh yeah. Okay, okay. But like a bunch of when you say us, do you mean Scots? <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. You were the one watching um, Legend of Galactic Heroes. That's what you, that's, that's you. You're Legend of Galactic Heroes person. That's you, yeah. Because I've been, I've, I've added that to my list because I've had it suggested so many times now. So I, it's like top of my list at the moment and I've been thinking about it every night when I get off stream, I'm like, Man, I should watch Legend of Galactic Heroes. And I was like, I just can't start that shit right now. I don't have the time. I don't have the mind to to watch and get in there. But but I remember you. I remember. How you doing? I mean, I think I've already asked how you're doing like three times. So today is Thanksgiving over here. Where we all pretend that we're thankful for the Native Americans that, that the pilgrims killed. Um, and everyone eats turkey. Uh, so fuck this stupid holiday, man. I'm not about holidays in the first place. Like I'm so atheist that I might as well be a Jehovah's Witness as far as like not celebrating holidays and like. I, I give people so much shit for celebrating holidays that I feel like I'm not even allowed to participate. Like I just did this with someone the other night where they were like, I don't care about Thanksgiving. I just like the food. And I'm like, you could have gone to the grocery store and bought that food last week and you didn't. I'm like, oh, well, spending time with family. I'm like, okay, yeah. I don't want to do that ever. So I'll just buy a turkey last week. Christmas, I usually do like a good, uh, a good couple weeks after Christmas. I'll give everybody some gifts because I love them. And um, it's a great way to do things because a couple weeks after Christmas, um, everything is cheap. Everything's on sale that they didn't sell during Christmas. So you get to buy up some cheap shit and give it to your friends and be like, hey, remember how I didn't give you anything on Christmas? I love you, Betty. Here's a granola bar. <laughs> but uh, I'm the same about like, you know, all the holidays. The only one I kind of care about is my birthday. I'm like, that's a, I guess it's a, a celebration. I made it another year. Yay. I lived. So I celebrate that, but um, I celebrate Halloween. I mean, I think, you know, honoring the spirits of the dead is a pretty noble cause. I can get behind that. I 
Are you a religious person? We don't have to get into a religious argument of any kind, but it, but it, typically religious people hold a lot of the different holidays with a little more reverence than, oh, I gotcha. You guys, like, so I'm so indoctrinated by America that like, when I think of holidays, weird shit comes to mind, like Veterans Day, and I don't think you have that. Or like um, President's Day and like the only holidays we don't have, or I'm sorry, the only holidays we have that aren't religious are totally national things. Yeah, Americans are fucking crazy about it, dude. And of course there are people from the Middle East. I've, I've learned very quickly with various viewers jumping in my, my chat from places in the Middle East. They're like very, very um, secular, is that the term? Uh, very, very religious. And their religion informs a lot of their values. Like, like I'm, I must be gay because I have long hair because the Bible says that men should cut their hair, even though it doesn't. Okay, yeah, yeah, you celebrate people. I was supposedly, uh, one of my ancestors which was John Knox, so I learned a lot about him and his fight against the Catholic Church and uh, the spread of Protestantism through Scotland. And um, so I know a little bit about that stuff. And uh, I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, how boy John Knox went around burning down Catholic churches. That's fucking rad. But yeah, I mean, spreading Protestantism in its place wasn't the best, but at least Protestantism is a religion that you can practice alone. Like it was one of those, are priests the only ones who can talk to God or can we all talk to God? Like separations. And where I don't believe in God, I think if you if if there were such a thing, definitely. Okay, I need to look up sectarianism because I used the word a second ago, wasn't sure about its usage. Now you've used it. I hear you, cat. Excessive attachment to a particular sect, party, especially in religion. Okay. Hence, religious sectarianism, meaning people who put their religion before all else and would never give it up. Okay, I got it. Catholic and Protestants. Okay. We have Christians here. Um, and more and more Mormons every year. And of course, Scientology can't forget about Scientology. What? There's like a a Protestant and a Catholic team. Are the Celtics Celtic Celtics or Celtics? What the fuck? Oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. The sectarianism. That's fucking weird. I mean, I've seen, like, videos of, like, the riots after soccer games in some European countries, and, and, like, we look at it and we're like, that's fucking crazy. But then we have Black Friday tomorrow, where multiple people will be injured and stomped on to buy big screen TVs. So, an Irish team, Rangers are Protestant, British team. Okay, and the Irish are obviously Catholic. So you've got a split there. Oh my God. You know, it's like that here, but there, but th it's not for that reason. You have um, like certain parts of California you shouldn't wear red or blue in because of the Crips and the Bloods, like the gangs. But if I went down the street in a blue shirt in a, in a blood neighborhood, they'd be like, hey dude, you know you shouldn't be wearing blue around here. And I'd be like, what? I am just a strange white guy. And they'd be like, get the fuck out of our hood. And I'd be like, okay. And I'd walk on out of there. So it's not like violent like that. 
Like it's more just like, hey, are you trying to rep that gang? No. Oh. All right, move on. But if you're like, yeah, I'm repping Crips. Crip forever. Or actually, let's say blood, because I can do the thing. Blood. Blood. Then they'll be like, blah, 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 blah. So it's not, yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe that's maybe that's a really good way to put it. They'll, they will definitely use that as an opportunity to be wankers. Not what we'd call them here, but yes. Um. Yeah, there's there, but there's people everywhere who will use anything as an opportunity to be pieces of shit. But um, yeah, no, I could I could see that as a as a big one. Yeah, you're you're saying it as soon as I'm saying it. Some people just want an excuse. They are a loaded gun, ready to go off, and they're looking for it. Um, I've experienced that firsthand so many fucking times, being a guy who looks like this. Um, I like used to go out to these bars that were really, um, how do I explain this to someone who's not an American? Um, people who like to pretend that they have a lot of money go to these bars. Dudes who go to the gym every day so that they can try and get laid go to these bars. Girls with fake boobs go to these bars. Whatever that kind of bar is, if you have that kind of place, um, that's where I used to hang out a lot. And dudes who spend their lives getting jacked so that they could get laid do not like me. Do not like me at all. And my hair, my outfit, my whatever was always an excuse to just go off. Nice pants, gay wad. I'm just like... Am I supposed to just take that? Or am I supposed to like call you an insult back? Because if I'm like, fuck off, asshole. Then they like get in your face. And go, what? What the fuck do you say? What the fuck? Yeah, toxic mas masculinity. And it's like, um, that was a big factor in going out for me toward the end. Was how many fights I would get into just for looking the way I look. Because it is an excuse for someone like that to mouth off. If they've had a bad day and they're out at that bar, I'm an excuse to say some fucked up shit. And it sucks, you know? I hate to be the one that's that vent because because I'm not a good choice. I'm a judo throw your ass across the bar real quick, but um yeah, it's whatever. People are violent. People are violent everywhere. I like Australians. They seem pretty cool. They don't seem like particularly violent or anything, you know? They just seem um, funny. They just seem funny. They just seem like they don't give a shit about anything. What kind of... Um Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And if you're if you're out at the club with, you know, your friends and maybe some chicks that you're trying to hook up with and you've got a chip on your shoulder and you're looking for something to like an opportunity to prove yourself, the smallest dude in the bar, not smallest cuz I'm usually taller than everybody, but the, the scrawniest dude in the bar is your target. If you want to prove you're strong, just start dunking on me all day. Just being like, haha, look at this fag. Look at this gay guy with his fucking nails painted. And it's like, dude, I am not. Why? Why? Why did we need to do this right now? It would have proven more about you if you'd walked up to me and been like, hey, man, interesting look. How are you doing? Let me buy you a shot. That would make you so much more masculine than being a fucking dick. Yeah. 
What a pineapple? That is that is exactly it too. It's always the fucking dudes who were dicks in high school and got away with it and it really only takes so much real life to beat them down because it does beat them down eventually and they stop and that's why that's why you're so much more of an asshole when you're young you know because you get away with it and then you've not gotten away with it 10 or 20 times as an adult and you go fuck maybe i shouldn't do that anymore because the cost was a lot um i've learned i cannot get into fist fights anymore even though i have only lost a handful a very small minority of the of the physical like altercations i've been in i injure myself so much just fighting like i could fight a mannequin and i would injure myself just to do it that now i cannot fist fight anymore so now when people come at me with aggression i have to defuse the situation because even if i beat them in a fight i will hurt so much that it was not worth it so it's just like hey man why don't we chill why don't we chill why don't we all cool that you know what i'll go over here i'm just gonna go over there i'm just gonna stay the fuck out of your way buddy <laughs> yeah some people it takes a really long fucking time you know to um working in dog rescue opened my eyes to i don't believe in good and evil and maybe as an atheist you don't either like i don't believe that there is anything in the world that possesses the quality like this does not contain goodness or evilness right so like we can't measure it it's not a substance so i don't like necessarily believe in it but like in dog rescue you would go to someone's house and they've abused their animal to such a degree that you're just like is is this what evil is is this like the end the ends of never questioning if it was you right like you never have that maybe it's me moment like you just keep going with i'm right forever and do more and more terrible things and it's so frightening like the level to which people can get with that shit where you're like are you not even trying to play by the same rules the rest of us in society are like we're all trying to be fucking civil people here and you're basically a fucking animal like what do we what do we do with you um so it's really tough but but um i try and forgive like like even that even the worst you know cases like going back to dudes getting in fights at bars like the big fucking muscly dude needs to prove himself by understanding that and being like well he needs he feels like he needs to prove himself why does he feel like that well because of toxic masculinity because of the way our society is set up to find a mate um because maybe he was picked on when he was a kid because he wasn't strong so now he's become strong and feels like he needs to pick on other people to to close that that you know circle and all of these are reasons they're not reasons why you should be like i forgive you and i think you're great either way but they're like okay get what this dude is doing i don't think he has control of himself i don't think that he understands these things are going on with himself so it would be kind of fucked up of me to beat the shit out of this guy just because he doesn't understand that toxic masculinity has made a victim of him so it's a really weird place to be once you start to get that stuff like i even felt like that with my father who like i had issues with as a kid and he wasn't around and yada 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 you know deadbeat dad kind of thing and as i got older it was just like well why was he this way he was this way because of this that and this is it okay no is there any other way that it could have gone down probably not so is being mad at him gonna help anything probably not is having an altercation with him gonna help anything probably not so what what can i do from here what can i do what can i do going forward let's just try and figure out how to like pat people on the back and be nice right like 
to make everyone feel better about life. We can all just chill. We can all just fucking chill. I love... I have a... Um, I have a Wild Stallions shirt. Wild Stallions from the movie Bill and Ted. And I love... Be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. Yeah, you're exactly... You're exactly right. Sometimes they do need it said. I don't know if they'll believe you though when you say to them like hey you're being a fucking asshole but like and the amount of information I would have to get across to someone in that in the heat of the moment to explain like here's why you hate me dude there's nothing to do with me you don't know me you hate the way I'm dressed why because it's because it's a symbol you dislike well what is that symbol well let's 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 dismantle your feelings about it and talk about why you feel that way like they don't they don't want to have that conversation so sometimes yeah it has to be at the ends of a of a fist uh that you have that conversation um but i had one dude who tried to intimidate me and i stepped right into his face and gave him the old crazy eye you know and he stepped back from the fight he was just like whatever i don't need this shit and i ran into him a few years later and he like bought me a shot and he was really cool um you're not clever and the bot can still see when you do that so like um he was like it freaked me out that you weren't intimidated so i thought you might have had a gun on you but you know later on i thought about it and it was fucked up that i was being a jerk to you so i wanted to say i'm sorry and i was like whoa Holy shit. That's awesome, dude. Thank you. I I, I I thought you were being a dick too and I was going to stay on my ground no matter what. Like even if you were fucking 10 times my size, I wasn't about to just back down. And he's like, yeah, no, I totally get it. And that's, that's awesome. And I was like, cool. We're friends now. Now we're buddies. All it took was literally just thinking about the situation for 10 seconds and we, we could be cool. Uh, asshole in school oh man that's cool at least at least you put in the effort to close that wound yeah fuck I was that person for so long where my family was really verbally what's the what's the metaphor here where they nip at you like little piranhas like tiny little fish they just take little bites out of you like is that how you're gonna do your hair oh i'm not saying anything bad about it i'm just surprised you're doing it that way is all is that oh why do you wear those kinds of shirts well you know nothing wrong with it it's just weird that you wear those kinds of shirts like my family's really good at this like little bites kind of thing um so i thought that joking was jabbing at my friends i thought that that the joking with my friends inherently needed to be me being a little bit mean to them and that the correct response was for them to be a little bit mean to me like my family is and they never really were they'd always just be like man that's messed up and so i was the mean one of the group and then it was the i'm the honest one i'm the one who's going to tell it like it is and then one day i was like fuck i'm just an asshole shit I gotta change that so I had that moment I had one where um there was a new kid in school in fifth grade and a lot of the kids in my class didn't really like me I was just kind of an outsider so when the new kids showed up a couple of them were making fun of him and I joined in intentionally making fun of this kid so that maybe the other kids would accept me more and then I kind of became the worst one making fun of this kid so that that because the other kids all thought it was funny when I did it and I wanted them to like me and I I uh, I look back on that with horror I look back on that just like why why on earth would I have ever done that to someone and I remember at one point he was like I thought you were my friend and I laughed at him and was like you're an idiot you're dumb like it was just so mean oh it hurts me to this day i wish i could find that kid and be like 
I'm sorry. Even if you don't remember this happening, I'm so he probably does remember it happening. He's probably like, I've thought about it every single day. Um, but yeah, like those things stick with you. They haunt you a little bit. Hey, holy moly, Jesus Christ. I like the name. Yeah, so I was enough of a little shit when I was young that you gotta you gotta stop eventually. Maybe 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 we make the best um, pacifists in the end because we're like, no, I already know what it's like to be an asshole, and it didn't make me ha happy. I had empathy and I knew what I was doing was wrong. Isn't that weird? That you can know what you're doing is wrong and you know it is hurting someone and you empathize with the pain that it's bringing them but you do it anyway. Because the, the personal reward, it was a survival technique for me. I needed to be accepted by those kids so that they'd stop making fun of me. And that was the easiest ticket there. And that's awful. You know, that doesn't excuse it at all. Because it just shouldn't have. But, yeah, that is how you grow. Because I'll never do something like that again. Because of the haunting. Because of his ghost following me around. Fucking the sad little face I saw when he realized I wasn't his friend. Um... I'm always going to be like more value than kindness. Uh, in America, right now it is too. Especially from the Trump presidency forward, being funny and making fun of people who are weak is valued more than being emotionally honest or being kind to people or being um, like... Uh, what's the word I want to look for here? It's like Mr. Rogers was very transparent about his feelings. <laughs> that's a weird... Then the, I mean, and that's how I hear it is in Australia, too. Everyone just constantly takes little, little, little pop shots at each other, and it's just this constant sparring match. And... There's a part of that that sounds fun. Like it sounds like, hey, we're all at least joking. We at least have a sense of humor with each other, right? You know, and, and there's a part of that that people would, would argue is going to toughen you up. It's going to make it so that if I, as some fucking random dude that you run into, talk some shit to you, you're just going to kind of breeze it off because you've dealt with so much already. But I feel like living in that environment is not good for a human body. Like I just got told by a doctor that I have shallow, uh, shallow breath because of prolonged anxiety. It sends the signal to your lungs to not fill up all the way, to go with shallow, shorter breaths. Um, and what this does is eventually the bottoms of your lungs stick together. And then it sticks together more and it sticks together more and then that chamber closes and you only have four chambers in your lungs so she said my bottom chamber was basically like stuck together like it can open but it just doesn't want to so i have to do these weird breathing techniques all beside the point point being living with anxiety for so long affected my physical health so if you're constantly living with the anxiety i guess or the the, the, the heightened hypervigilance of keeping yourself aware and ready to spar with anyone who, who comes your way and might be like, hey, you look like a ding dong. And you're like, hey, you look like, you know, look like I fucked your mom. Like the, the need to constantly be in that mode, I wonder if it has an effect on like your cortisol levels or your stress home, the other stress hormones and like stuff like that. Like, I just, I, I don't think we've figured all this shit out yet and we've built a society now that tries to, to raise people with instructions 
but the instructions are all fucking stupid and wrong. So none of us, none of us know how to fucking live. We're all idiots. But our bodies are rejecting it. And um, we're going to figure this shit out. There are some states where it's more like that than others, where people talk more shit to each other than in other states, like in New York. Um, if you're doing something in the street that's loud, someone will yell at you to shut the fuck up. And you're supposed to just turn back to them and be like, you shut the fuck up and keep doing what you're doing and like have this not affect you in the slightest. Like it didn't even happen. That like like they just said hello and you looked and said hello, but you're both like, hey, you shut the fuck up, you piece of shit. Hey, fuck you. And you walk along and, and you're fine. And I got used to that very quickly because that's how my family is. We just talk shit to each other all the time. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. But, uh, but I, I could see the line being a lot blurrier in that scenario versus, say, a culture where jabbing at people wasn't the norm. If you made a jab at someone, it immediately would be like, whoa, you're bullying, which is kind of how America is starting to kind of get with our like anti-bullying and, and you know social justice and stuff like that, where it's like, whoa, don't say that. That's fucked up. Um... But with a culture where it's normal to say fucked up shit to each other, then then you have to be like, was that really bullying or were they just kind of kidding around? But I guess if you have that culture, it's probably easier for you to tell. Like you probably know exactly where that line is. Like you'd probably be like, oh, it's when it goes from general insults to personal insults. Like if I say, hey, fuck you, you piece of shit, that's fine. But if I say, your nose looks like a, you know, some racial thing, then maybe that's, maybe that's not the same. Maybe that's just being a dick. Um, so I can get it if you had that culture, but it's still very, I don't know, it's a, it's a blurrier line. Yeah, yeah, that's what I can see. Anything personal, personal is what's off limits. So if like I make fun of your job, your family, your, you know, like, I don't know. I could probably make fun of your shirt, but if I made fun of like the fact that your clothing was poor people clothing, that would maybe be a little too far. I get it, because the rules are very similar in New York. That's just kind of how it is, like, Everyone talks shit. That's good, actually. It's like, I remember back in Diablo, there were player killers, and then there were player killer killers who would just like hunt down player killers and kill them. Like, it kind of makes me think of that kind of logic of like, like we all want to make fun of people, right? But we keep it cool until someone is a dick. Then we let loose on that motherfucker relentlessly and that that kind of makes sense okay okay yeah <laughs> it's like we all have this killer instinct but we're keeping it in check have you let yours loose now we get to do it to you and that's yeah yeah, 
And like, like I mean, kind of like we've both said, there's a time in my life when I was looking for, you know, an excuse too. So it was just like, I mean, I'm still looking for excuse, I'm sure. As much as I've cooled down and calmed down, if someone gave me a real good reason to just fucking rip on them, it would probably feel real good to just completely make fun of someone and ridicule them relentlessly. It'd be nice to go to a roast, like where I'm allowed to make fun of my friend for a few minutes. Because shit talking as kids was kind of fun. Like, there was a fun element to it. We just don't. Me and my friends don't. And I, I do kind of miss it. You know, I, I do. I want a culture where, like, all the kids don't make get made fun of and shit and bullying is gone but I also want a culture where yeah we can kind of roast each other and and it's fun and it helps reveal you know if my friends are roasting me it helps reveal my best and worst qualities they're going to make fun of the best things about me and the worst things about me that's kind of how roasting works and it brings those things to the surface so we're just like <laughs> yeah, no, we, uh, ours is clean. We've created a perfect safe space. And it's not like I've ever been some super social justice warrior that's like, I don't know, people shouldn't get triggered and they should have their safe spaces. But at the same time, I'm like, but what do you want to trigger people? Like, what's your goal here? <laughs> yeah, sounds fun. It does sound fun. And there's probably, yeah, there's something cathartic about that. Releasing that, that little bit of frustration and kind of making fun of each other. Maybe that's why you don't have a bunch of school shootings and mass shootings in your country. And we do. Because people have to keep all this shit bottled up for forever. And then they're like, well, I've bottled up all my hatred for the world and I have access to a lot of guns. Let's do this. And it's an American thing. That is such. It, it's in. A, it is an American thing to be a mass shooter, to just go out with a gun and literally just be thinking, "How many people can I kill before they get me?" Like, yeah. Oh yeah, and then there's people in America that are like, oh no, if you just ban guns, then people are just going to do mass murders with knives. <laughs> exactly, unless the guy is fucking kunai that he's fucking hurling from 40 feet away and nailing people in the spinal cord. Like, I think we'll be okay from the dude with the knife. I can kick it. I can kick it out of his hand. I can't, I can't kick your gun before you kill me with it. So, yeah, that, there's that. There's that. That Literally, people in America think that if you ban guns, the exact same thing will happen with knives. But I don't get it. I don't get what it is that's happening to American men. Our suicide rate is skyrocketing. Our drug overdose rate is skyrocketing. And our murder rate of others 
is skyrocketing and it gets worse every year and it's like what the fuck is happening over here like we're doing something wrong and i'm i'm a big anti-capitalist like i hate the whole oh yeah yeah that's true that's very true the dude that drew the they drove the pickup truck and all those people that kind of thing although it's a little easier to dodge a pickup truck than a bullet but yeah you know i mean and that's so there's a fiction story i read that opened my mind to the idea what up stormy welcome back there was a story I read that opened my mind to the idea that if technology continues to increase we will inevitably reach a point in time where children will have the technology to destroy the world at a whim I don't know maybe let's pretend you can 3d print a nuke you know like something crazy like this that we can't even imagine now that in a hundred or two hundred years is going to be available to people where they can do destruction on a level that we can't even imagine now. We have to trust humanity to not use those kind of weapons against itself. And if we can't trust humanity with guns, how the fuck can we trust humanity with nukes? So I'm not a, I'm not 100% for banning guns because that's not the problem. Mental health is the problem. And if you solve mental health, they won't use guns or knives or trucks or bombs or anything. Um, what? Are you guys, where's, where's the third one? Where's the other person who comes with you two? There was someone else. Yeah. And that's the fear, Butterfingers, is, you know, hijack a drone and fly that around a football stadium just fucking murdering people. Like, we're gonna hit a point real soon where the damage an individual can cause is gonna way outpace what a gun is. So banning guns won't solve that problem that's on the horizon. What are we gonna do about that? And if we can fix that, we have fixed the gun problem. I was on here last night until about 3 a.m., 3.30 a.m. my time, and then I was out. I hit eight hours uptime, which was a total of 16 hours streaming for me yesterday. Whoa, you guys sleep in voice call with each other? That's cute. I know some people who do that. It's real far. Yeah. It's my second 16 hour session this week. I looked at my social blade last night and I was like, holy fuck. I've been on so much. I've been on so much lately. There's number three. There's number three, Rough Rider. All right, Mr. Butterfingers. It's been good talking to you, man. Have a good day. What up? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to switch off of Gatorade and go get to the water. Yeah. Money. When would you like to? I'm wondering if you really, if you want to have uh, Boston Market, or if you don't, it's your Mexican food or something. Yeah, I don't give a shit. I don't either. I, I don't celebrate this as a holiday, so Mexican food is fine. Want to go to uh, Los Angeles? If you'd like. Might have to stay on the line a little bit. I mean, I kind of feel like maybe we shouldn't be spending money. Go somewhere cheap. Go to fucking Filiberto's. Aw, that's really cheap. 
It's not, this isn't a holiday, you know what I mean? This isn't a thing. It's just a day. We match, look at that. I woke up and he was still in here in the morning for a while. He got up to eat and then went outside and then went back in. And then I opened the gate a little bit in case he wanted to come out. Hungry. Thank you guys. I just threw her food. I threw her two big handfuls of food. She's, she just talks to me. She's not hungry. She just talks. All right. <coughs> then, um, I guess. That's true. It's just another day. It's just another day. There's no reason to spend money. Well, we're going to spend it. Well, you know what I mean, though. Like, not, like. I know. Why go have a nice dinner when. Because I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> We can go any other day of the year. I know, I know. And tomorrow, there will be Black Friday. Everyone will be stampeding through Walmart, so. I'm going to work tomorrow. Hi, Pyro. What up? Oh, you're working? That's cool. Double thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's worth it. I want to take off and have the four days, but I want to do lay in there sleep all day. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to go to Fry's. Uh, <coughs> whenever cool. we'll go over to Philip Are you hungry? No. I just woke up and I had a granola bar. Oh, I haven't eaten yet. I haven't eaten my head. Yeah, it's already noon. I, I was going to be like, why don't you have like lunch or whatever and then we'll go get food later. But well, I guess you could. Well, places are going to close. Not Filiberto's. No, not Filiberto's. So we'll get that later. Yeah. All right. I'll just grab eat something. Yeah, if you just grab something, then, then we'll be hungry again around the same time. You guys live in the same place? Stop calling me a damn pirate. I don't look like a freaking Johnny Depp, you dumb dumb. That's what this guy said. He's like, bones are, are. All day yesterday, people kept telling me I look like Captain Jack Sparrow. Yeah. This is Grandma. Hi. Grandma's been taking care of me since I got sick, so Grandma's a good lady. And that's who you've heard me talking out of Thanksgiving celebrations. Cool. I, I streamed for 16 hours yesterday. I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you have an addiction. I have an addiction. I think we might have to turn the Wi-Fi off during the day or something. <laughs> Fuck. Grandma's having a good day. She's she's gonna go run some errands, and then we're gonna go get Mexican food tonight. And even though I don't celebrate the holiday, I'm gonna sit out in the living room. I'm going to be a nice, good little grandson. I'm going to eat food with my grandma. We're going to have a nice dinner together. We're going to talk about what we're thankful for in life. And it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> that's, that, that's not the joke. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll talk about what we're thankful for in life. <laughs> yeah. I'm thankful. I have no broken bones currently. True. What are you, you jerked it to the stream? What are you talking about? Did you go watch my videos and wank it? I, I saw on Social Blade my video views doubled last night. I got 161 video views yesterday. Is it you guys? You watching my old videos? You watching my old videos and giving yourself a little touches you you mad lads you mad lads you I mean it looks like I average like I don't know 50 to 100 video views a day but yesterday it was 161 so I'm like someone went crazy one or two people watched a lot of videos Cool. 
Maybe that's what it was. Maybe there was people who don't know me checking out old videos. You're like, who is this feller? I don't know how I come across in not real time. Um, you know what I mean? Like, like if you're just watching videos and me talk to other people, like, days ago, I don't, I don't know how I come across. But if you pop in and you're like, hi, then you're going to get the full Bones experience. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm appreciative that you told your friends to check me out. Ooh. Did you have like a full beard thing going on? I feel like I'm gonna shave my mustache off any day here. And, and this thing. I'm gonna shave it all. And be a facial hairless boy again for a little while. Look like this. You're getting it, Dylan. You're getting it. The full gold tier bones. Want to hear a cool song? I made this. Bye. On a mountainside, I choose to hide my feelings. I've been listening to a lot of my own music today. Every once in a while, I have to go back and do that. Okay, Dylan. See you later, little one. You all know that that's the proper thing to call people who call you daddy, right? You guys know the formal, the formal way do we handle this? That if you call me daddy, then you are officially one of my littles. And I have to call you little one. Or baby. I don't know if I know I don't know how much you know. I don't know how much you know about daddies. I know all the rules. Give me some oohs. Give me some oohs in the chat and get out of here. Later, little one. Did you like it? Did you like it? Oh, I don't want to listen to Avis Industries. This is a lot. This is a lot to have to. I'll listen to. I'll listen to nothing left, and I'll listen to Inside Alive, and then that's it. <clears throat>
Okay. I posted it. Because I like purple unplanned. <laughs> That's cute. Because they're already purple. That's cute. Okay.
Zero. I know. It's sad. It's depressing. I'm sitting here, sitting here all alone. But it's okay. I'm listening to my own old music because that's not depressing. <laughs> it's actually not. I'm actually listening to it and and I'm like, hmm, four years ago, me was pretty cool. Um, yeah, no, it's okay. I'll live. My, my community is slowly growing and the time that I spend with zero or one viewers is slowly uh, changing. Like it was a lot, you know, my first few days, it was a lot of time sitting with zero viewers. Now it's like five minutes here, 10 minutes there before at least someone I know pops in to say hello. And I'm getting more and more people every day that I meet that, that stop by the next day. So it, it, it's getting there, it's getting there. I'm basically two weeks in, you know? Um, What can you ask for with two weeks of Twitch? Whew. I figured a lot of people would be on for today though, because I thought that there was more lonely people who didn't celebrate, but I guess a lot of people, my hat, it's over there. It's right over there, hanging on the wall. I keep all my all my cool shit hanging on the wall over there. That's a kimono. I got my denim jacket. I got my cool hat. Yeah, I mean, people in other countries don't. But so for you guys, today is just a day like any other day. But I figured a lot of Amer Americans would be like, I'm lonely because I hate my family. But it seems to not be the case. Damn, I didn't even want to listen to this album. I was like, I don't want to listen to my whole album. That's a long listen. It's like 45 minutes. And I was like, I'll just listen to the last track. And now I've gone backwards through all the tracks because I'm like, fuck, this is a cool album. I hate myself. Yeah, well, right now, it's like 3 p.m. on the East Coast, so they're all probably eating right now. In fact, I just had four people stop in, and they were like, hey, what's going on? Okay, bye, I gotta go eat. So, uh, and even Grandma was like, when are we gonna go eat? I was like, why don't you go have lunch? And when you're hungry again, we can go eat, because I'm not hungry in the fucking slightest. So I was like, okay. She ran off to do her errands. God damn this fucking... My hands don't work. What's your name? Oh, I dropped it, but thankfully I dropped it right here on my desk and all as well happens a lot my hands are super shaky and sometimes when I'm holding things my my fingers just open like I'm holding a paintbrush or whatever and my chat or my fingers just like ouch that sucks that's a long delay everything on my end looks good so my uh, my connections solid nothing I can really do to improve that ah Gotcha. Yeah, it um, slowly leaks butane. I need to buy a new one. So I just buy really cheap butane 
and uh, have to fill it like every other time I use it or such. Things I'll buy when I'm a rich and famous Twitch streamer. <laughs> I'm going to get a microphone when Twitch pays me, but I found out the payment doesn't come until 15 days after the end of the month in which you got the subscription or whatever. So I won't get paid for my November stuff until the 15th of December. So by like the 17th of December, I'm going to have a better microphone. Until then, I got this little thing. It works. Oh my god, dogs. For millennia for us humans, forgetting has been easy. We forget most of what we experience every day and feel into the past. Remembering is hard. Since the beginning of time, therefore, we humans have tried to overcome this forgetting and to hold on to memories that are precious. For thousands of years, we've tried to pass on our memories to our children in the hope that they too may thus be able to do them again. The dogs were all howling, so I had to be like, hey dogs, stop fucking howling. That was a big hit. I was happy with it. <sighs> Crazy ass dogs. But, I love them. There are pups. My mom's dogs are gonna be staying with us for five days starting tomorrow. And um, I'm excited about that, I love her dogs. Ooh, a message for me. What? I think my grandpa got the shit kicked out of him. Dude, no, it's an infection. Grandpa looks like he got the shit beat out of him. It's an infection. Yeah, he's getting flown to Anchorage in Alaska for treatment. So he's a uh, truck driver up in up in Alaska. He's an ice road trucker. Um, so I guess he's going to the hospital, but I'm sure he'll be okay.
Yesterday, my mom was telling me that she is going to try and enroll in vet school and that she was nervous for this reason or that reason, you know, because she's in her 50s, so she wouldn't graduate vet school until she's in her 60s and like all this stuff. And I was just like, I think this is within your capability. I'm less nervous about it for you than you are for yourself. I know once you get it started, you're gonna love doing it and then you'll be so happy to have the degree and yada yada. And she was like, thank you. That was really, really nice of you to say. And I was thinking about it and I was just like, fuck, I am the only nice person in my family. <laughs> so when I say nice things to my family members, they're always like, <gasps> Wait. Oh. Thanks. Like, it's, it's this really weird reaction I get. Them people's crazy. Um... Yeah, but if, I guess it's an infection. One time when I was living in New York, I went out drinking and doing drugs all night, and I woke up and my right eye was all puffy like that. Like it was all swollen and shit. Okay, cool, so now I'll, uh, I'll see your Insta. Um, and uh, so I'm interested in what they find because it might be... Um, I don't see any new followers. 21 hours ago? Does it end with Moto? Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's just, it's not a picture of you as your default. It's a picture of an object. I sent a request. I have to be your friend to, uh, to look at your, at your page. You have to approve me because you're like a super secret squirrel. Nice, I like your layouts. These are slick. Wow, you have a really nice slick Insta page. You should not have this on private. You should not have this on private. You should have this on public so that people can actually follow you. Yeah. So you can get followers. So you can maybe get some recognition for the work you're putting in. That's cool. A lot of people don't. People didn't way back when the internet started, right? People were like, don't share your personal stuff online. Then it became like, hey, who cares? Put all your personal shit online. Now it's kind of getting back to like, hey, maybe you shouldn't put all your shit online. 
Um, I grew up in the go ahead and put it all out there era. So all of my shit is out there. Everything is public. There are dick pics of mine online. There's, there's videos of me banging chicks online. There's videos of me dancing around and doing stupid shit. But like, I got you. I grew up the son of a performer. So for me, life is a performance kind of thing. Like I just wanna, the world is my audience. Like, I, I don't know, it's, it's just a different way of thinking or yes. I want to be, I want people to be entertained. But if that's not, you know, how you grew up, then yeah. That's not a common trait. Not everyone is like this. <laughs> and that's why I always joke and I'd say that like you can ask some of the people in chat that know me in real life, like Churro or Once in Future Beard, where it's like, I'm like this in real life all of the time. This is who I am. I am a weird motherfucker. I sing songs about my pen. Where the fuck is my pen? I can't find my pen. I want to find it. Like just stupid shit like that. Um, I'm I'm weird and loud and obnoxious and crazy. And so um, the internet's a good place for me to put that. I can vent that here and not put as much of it on my family who would have to deal with me doing it otherwise. <laughs> At least now when I go talk to grandma, I'm not like, how you doing, grandma? I think we should have breakfast. Like, I go out and I'm like, I streamed for 15 hours last night. I'm exhausted. I love you. Do you want to get food? <laughs> so, um, it's just, it's just who I am. And I've had to find ways to deal with that feeling of wanting to put stuff out there. And um, that's why I have like every kind of social media. I've made every kind of art, visual, uh, video, audio. I've made music. I've made paintings. I wrote a comic book. I write stories. I like fucking everything. And I'm not that great at anything. I'm really bad at most of these things. But I can't stop. <laughs> I have a problem. Okay, we're gonna listen to, we're gonna listen to one of the favorite tracks of mine that I ever made, all right? This is, this is one of the favorite songs I ever wrote. Cause I'm listening to my own music right now. That's what you've been hearing. And this was five years ago. It does not seem like that long. Holy shit. my nicotine that's how I get it Come, come, hang out with me. Uh, I use 12, 12 milligram. 
It used to use higher, but they stopped selling it. So whatever the highest they'd sell me at my vape shop, I just slowly went down the list until now I'm at 12 is the highest they'll sell. I was a pack a day smoker for seven years. I don't know. I don't know if you ever got into real smoking or not, but that shit will fuck you up. Oh, that's right. You said that. You don't like to vape and drink beer or whatever. Sad. Sad. I have missed you. I was thinking about you this morning. I was like, Sad Girls hasn't been around for a couple days. She must be doing something. So, you know, I don't hold it against you. You got, you got life. You got life going on. Um, absolutely nothing's up today. Grandma and I are going to get Mexican food. Um, slow day, slow day. I streamed for 16 hours again yesterday, so I'm kind of beat. Um, today I had the insatiable urge to wake up and listen to my own music from five years ago. That's what we're hearing now. Um... I have all my doctor's appointments set up. I have nothing to do today. I got nothing going on. Whoa. Yeah, well, children have energy. Like, that's the way it is. Us, us grown-ups run on a limited resource. And, like, with my fucking shit, the fact that I've been doing this... Oh, my God, you crazy bitch. I love you. That's awesome. I need to watch Hunter x Hunter. I want to watch Tale of the Galactic Hero. I want to watch Hunter. I want to watch... Um, I have a couple more Gundam series I need to finish. I haven't finished all of the Gundam series yet. Okay. Later, Pyro. Pyro came in my room because I had zero viewers. They felt sad for me. I decided I want to watch all, all of the Gundam series. All of them. And so I'm done with most of them. I only have like two or three left to go. Some are definitely better than others. That's for sure. But... Yeah, pity is a useful weapon. Yeah, when I get to zero streamers again or when everyone logs off, I'll just log off too and take a nap and then try again later. That's like all of them. Beam sabers are a big thing in Gundam. Even the original Gundam had a beam saber. You probably watched Gund Gundam Wing. And big angel wings on a on a giant robot. There is one that had giant um, chain guns. There is one that has a big dragon's mouth that can go whoop and bite you. There is one that used a scythe, a beam scythe. That's Gundam Wing. That's probably the one you saw because I don't think they ever aired any of the other ones on Toonami. Ooh. Hell yeah. 
15 bucks an hour to just fucking chill with some kids and play video games, I'm down. Sign me up. I uh, I used to dog sit a lot, and I charged 50 bucks a night to dog sit. And that was great. I thought that I'd get some business over Thanksgiving and Christmas, but... I haven't had business in a long time. I wonder what's up in my account. I should go check it out. Damn, nice. You won't have to steal as many pizzas after that. You can actually buy your own pizza. God, I hate being poor. It's so awful. Why? Why is my love? Why is my life like this? Oof. Ouch. I was never one of those people who were like, those poor people, they just need to get jobs and work harder. I was never that guy. I grew up with my mom being like ghetto rich, hood rich, or you you make a bunch of money, or you spend on dumb bullshit. Um, and then we uh, didn't have money anymore by the time I was a teenager. And like literally, I remember one day us turning over all the couch cushions looking for change and using that to buy Taco Bell. And like. So all of a sudden it was like, oh, my mom's working as hard as she can and we're still poor. Hmm, what's going on here? Damn. Nah, my life's always been like, my mom was always like, just be happy. I don't care, I don't care, just be happy. She got on my ass for like failing because she knew I could do better, but I was never a straight A student, so I could never be held to that standard. Oof. Doesn't see the point of listening to music, you know, because it's, it's, it's been around for thousands of years for no reason at all. I don't know why I put a drum solo in this song. It's like one of the dumbest things I've ever done to a song ever. Aww. It just didn't fit into the song right. It did when I was writing the song, but Thanks for spending a bit. How you doing? Perfect. Damn. Perfect. I just, I don't, I don't know if I've ever had a perfect day. We're not doing Thanksgiving. We don't celebrate that shit around here. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't joke around with, with silly, silly traditions. We're like Jehovah's Witness, but atheist. 
Uh, the day I met David Bowie. It wasn't a perfect day, but that was a perfect moment. Yay, five bits. Yeah, he liked my jacket. So the fact that I wore that jacket, went to the David Bowie concert, those elements must therefore be perfect by virtue of the perfect moment that occurred. All things before my before that moment in time must have occurred in order to create that moment. So I have to accept all of those things as perfect. Everything after that is trash. It's just a big burning pile of trash. Yeah, that's true. That does ha Whoa, why did all your cool badges disappear? You had all those cool badges. Now you don't? Um, that was weird. It was only on that one sentence that it disappeared. Um, no, it doesn't ruin all days. You could still have cool days afterwards. It's just that... It's just that... Everything else has sucked. <laughs> <coughs> no. I moved to New York and I got laid a lot by some real, real hotties. And despite what they tell you... Sex can make you happy. I mean, it did me. It did, it did me. Um, and then I couldn't stop doing cocaine, so I had to come home. And every day after that has been trash. Like... Like, it puts you in a better mood when you are masturbating more often. Yeah, it makes sense. You know? And if you get laid all the time, you're also getting this, like, this value boost all the time where the, the, the person is like, oh my god, you're so hot. Um, I want you so bad. Like, all that kind of shit. And you're like, yeah, yeah, awesome. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. And then you do it again with someone else next week? Fuck, you feel cool as fuck. And that's how America has established its value system. That is what coolness is. Um, I cannot even get laid right now. I'm, I've been trying. I've been trying for months. The only, the, the only step I have not taken is contacting exes. And I have a hard and fast rule against that now. It's not the puss that makes you cool. It's the conquest of the puss and success of that conquest. So how can I actually, <clears throat> um, I actually am so much more sexually interested in the flirting game that happens and winning them over than the actual sex that happens. But the sex is the is like the byproduct of the victory that I got, and that was what I wanted. So now we have sex. That's how we end that agreement. All right, now I'm gonna turn down music because this is not stuff I made.
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've wanted someone to go home for weeks. <laughs> and they keep coming back. And you're like, you're back. Hi. Well, you're here, so we might as well fuck. But can you fucking just stop coming over here? Could you just leave already? Um, and then I've also had, like, where I was trying to leave. This girl was li was straight up insane. I tried to leave, and she, like, followed me the whole way, like, having this really weird goodbye and, like, ran alongside the train blowing kisses to me. It was a really weird moment. And I was just like, I need to get the fuck out of here now. I've had that happen a few times where I've gone home with a girl and then been like, oh, fuck. I need to get out of here. She might kill me. Um, Because I like crazy girls. I like crazy girls more than needy girls. So... Most of mine are crazy, not needy. Um, <laughs> well, at least they're fucking trying. At least they're, I mean, and that's like the least offensive way to try, right? You know, like, I took a chance I may have mentioned before this girl that I went on a date with that we ran into her ex-boyfriend but that like she was fucking perfect for what I've been looking for and like we, we had really good chemistry we even had really good chemistry in person but then she got back with her ex um, I went I, I did something out of the blue the other day and I was like I'm just going to send her a text and it's just going to say, how are you? She did not respond. So, all right, done. Done with that one. Done. We're done. We, we, we got to wipe our hands there. We're done. I'm not going to ask her for coffee every week for, for three years. I am going to throw it out there a couple times. Like, maybe I think that's it. I think I'm done. If when I said, are you going to be at Comic-Con? She was like, yeah, me and my dude broke up, so I'm going alone. I would have immediately probably dropped the girl that I was with to get with this girl. God damn it. I've never had a chick get under my skin like that. Um, what about people that want feet pics? I'll sell some feet pics. Oof. That's weird. I think Rough Rider wants some some feet pics. There's someone in the chat right now. Hi, Casper. Hi. Um, that's weird. Can you make them pay him pay for him though? Like you can maybe make some money doing that, you know? Selling pictures of your feet. You can even sell the same picture to multiple people. Can't do that with panties. Unless you wear multiple panties at once. Guess that would work. If you put on like five pairs of panties and then masturbated, you could probably sell all five pairs, pairs of those panties. Whoa. That's safe. <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's do it. All right, I need a I need a break right now. I'm gonna have to log. I'm just gonna log off for a little while. I'll probably be back on later though. So, happy adios. Yep, happy Thanksgiving. I'll be on again in like a couple hours. Oh, sorry, Ashton, that you just showed up. 